Hi there. I may not be Troy McClure, but you may remember me from a YouTube video I posted two years ago in which I talked about cooking a steak in cast iron. What you probably remember is that in that video, I did this. This happened. I like to think I've had more experience with cooking in the two years since that video, and that's why I've felt like cooking another steak for YouTube. However, lately I've become more fond of a method that will probably have my guy license taken away when I show it here. Now, for most folks, there are few things better than to heat up a cast iron pan and get it screaming hot. You then slam the steak down on it, uh, sear the hell out of it, finish it off in the oven, and end up with a seared steak that shows you can grill with the best. On the other hand, I've learned over time that when it comes to cooking in cast iron, one of the best ways to cook is to take your time and to cook low and slow rather than rushing it. This method may take longer than searing your steak and cooking it in the oven, and it looks less exciting, but it eliminates the risk of setting your kitchen on fire, and you cook the steak entirely on your stovetop. To demonstrate, I chose this New York sirloin steak. Sirloin is less expensive than ribeye or strip steak, and it's a tougher cut of meat, and uh, we'll need to uh, tenderize it before cooking. Fortunately, this method requires nothing more than some food grade rock salt, which costs less than $2 at the supermarket. So all you need is this rock salt, corn oil, and of course, a vintage cast iron skillet. The first step in preparing this steak is to coat both sides with rock salt. I like using rock salt because the large grains of salt are less likely to be absorbed by the steak. After coating the steak, we let it sit for one hour. This allows the steak to come to room temperature, and it also begins a process of releasing some of the moisture. It's the same method that we use for giving a dry salt brine to the meat in order to preserve it and enhance the flavor. After 45 minutes, when there are still 15 minutes left for the steak to rest, we set our cast iron pan on the stovetop and set the burner to medium heat. And after letting the steak marinate for one hour, we can prepare for some cast iron cooking. We gently rinse the salt off the steak and pat it dry. Next, we coat both sides of the steak with oil. Here, we're using corn oil because corn oil has a higher smoke point than olive oil and it won't produce as much smoke when it cooks. I like giving my steak a generous amount of ground pepper because I love pepper. By now, our cast iron skillet is searing hot and the temperature has reached 600 degrees Fahrenheit. And here we go. Careful, I accidentally got a sliver of steak underneath the rest of it. I'm using a three minute egg timer to sear the steak for three minutes on each side. After three minutes, we flip the steak and sear the other side. From here, we flip a second time and use a probe thermometer to check the temperature. For medium rare, we want the steak to reach 135 degrees Fahrenheit. And we flip for the third and final time to cook the other side. At this point, the temperature is above 135 degrees, and this steak is done. This took a total of 12 minutes flipping three times and searing at three minutes per side. We set the steak out to rest for five minutes. Now for a trick they use in restaurants. 
we set the hot skillet to one side and place a cast iron serving plate on the hot burner to let that heat up while the steak is resting. And we add a bit of red wine to deglaze the pan and pour the fond over the steak. This is all I ever use for steak sauce because it doesn't need any more than this. And now for the baptism of fire. We place the steak onto the hot iron platter and serve it sizzling and smoking. And let's see how it looks. I'd say we have a nice medium rare steak. When I was young and I didn't know any better. Our grandmother would occasionally cook steak for us, and as soon as the steak was set before me, I would drown it in huge amounts of Worcestershire sauce. My grandmother always chastised me, and she said I should try tasting the steak without the sauce, but she still let me drown it every single time. It wasn't until after I grew up many years later and learned to appreciate the taste of fine foods that I realized how I was ruining the steak every single time. I couldn't appreciate the flavor of a steak seared just right, sauced with nothing but its own juices, mixed in with just a touch of wine. But I've learned my lesson, and since then I've learned to savor the taste of the steak itself. That's why when you taste a steak cooked like this, you don't need anything else. Thank you for watching. Mm-hmm.